I have not worn it a single time, which kind of makes me sad because I was so excited about this and I worked on it for so, so long. and welcome to another episode. My name is Kika and today I'm gonna show you all the things that I'm currently working on knitting wise and also actually I just started a crochet project but before we get into all that I need to show you my finished gunny, ins gunny, <laughs> gunny inspired sweater that if you saw the week from last week no the video from last week um, you know that I run out of yarn. So this is all the yarn that I have left so safe to say, I am definitely not gonna have enough yarn. And I wasn't able to complete this, but now I have completed it and I unraveled the sleeves again because I didn't have so much yarn. So I made them like really tiny or the first sleeve really tiny. And now I have the volume, the puffiness. I am so, so happy with how it turned out. I really feel like I got pretty close to the original one and also, um, I could have made the sleeves even with more volume, like the Gunny version, but I don't want to have like too much pop because I know that realistically, I'm not gonna be wearing something with too much pop. So I made them a little bit more modest, but I'm very happy with how it turned out. I only um, in the end used four skeins of each, the Borstet Alpaca and the Double Sunday from Sunday's Garn. And it became so nice. So I think actually I'm gonna make another version, which is going to be long sleeved, also, when I tried this on um, without the sleeves, it looked really nice as a vest as well. So I might even make a long sleeve one and uh, more of a vest, like a slipover version of this. And definitely gonna make a pattern because this was also so quick to knit. I used 10 millimeter needles, which are really thick needles. So um, the challenge was to make it in 48 hours and I would definitely have been able to complete that if I hadn't run out of yarn. But anyways, just wanted to show you this one first. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna call this and probably gonna take me a while to get the pattern uh, down and then just uh, work out all the kinks and maybe I'll release this then more towards autumn or we'll see. You never know <laughs> with these things how effective I'm able to be. But yeah, this is uh, my most current, no, my most recent finished object. But in this video, I wanted to show you all the things that I've been working on because <laughs> There are a lot. Um, I feel like I go through phases and periods where I just feel like starting new projects. And oh boy, I have definitely been in one of those phases recently. Uh, just yesterday, I started two new things. Uh, the day before, I think, I didn't start anything the day before, but <sighs> there's just been a lot. So, um, and there are of course lots of older projects that have been a little bit forgotten, like unfinished objects that, eh, I can't, I don't, I'm not ready to depart with them yet. Um, and I haven't decided what to do with them yet. So I'm not gonna show you like everything because that would be honestly like a video lasting, I don't know how long. So just the most current ones, the ones that I'm excited about. So hopefully this is gonna bring you lots of inspiration and gonna be itching to you to get your needles out. So let's jump right into it. Grab some things. I feel like the most annoying thing with works in progress is all the yarns that get so tangled up. Okay, it's not the prettiest setup, but it'll do. So I figured we're gonna go in chronological order, but backwards. So starting with the most recent one, which is uh, this that I, oh no, the yarns. E. Oh, the yarn is like wrapped all around. How is it this even possible? off to a great start. And this is why you should keep your projects in project bags <laughs> and not stack them up like I have just done. Okay, yes, 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 yes. We have one yarn is free and loose. All right, yes. So the first one that I just cast on yesterday is just going to be a simple, super simple cotton top. So 
just gonna do it. I haven't decided yet if I'm just gonna do it in stockinette stitch or if I'll make, I'm kind of itching to do, I saw this one by Vitra Design, which I think is really nice, like adding this little detail. So something's happening in the top, but otherwise it's still quite simple. So I might do something like that with it, um, but I haven't yet decided. And for this one, I'm just using two skeins of Mandarin Petite by Sun is Gone. I really like this kind of terracotta uh, color. Um, don't have that much in this color in my wardrobe, but I remember I had one uh, t-shirt like many, many years ago. And for some reason, like that color and that t-shirt, I wore so much. There was also something with the fit that just looked so good. So I'm hoping <laughs> that it's this color that is going to do miracles um, once I get it done. So yeah. That's just something, it, I also feel like this is a project that I can just knit in the car, something that is super easy that I don't have to look at or think about too much. So that kind of satisfies that need or that desire. So that was the most current one. I need a system now. Maybe I'll just put them, put them here. The second one that I also started yesterday is actually a crochet project. Now, um, mostly I talk about knitting here, but I've actually also been into crochet a lot. I used to make these amigurumis, you know, the little toys uh, back in the day when I was living in Berlin. I would make lots of those like keychains. Um, unfortunately, I've thrown all of them away, which is kind of sad. It would be so nice to have some of them. But yesterday, and I feel like I've been seeing this trend with like crochet and crochet bags and these kind of cro uh, straw bags, like a beach bag. And I was actually looking at one in a shop the other day and it cost 40 euros. And then I just thought like, I have so much yarn and so much cotton yarn because I've been going a little bit bananas over that recently. So why don't I just try to make my own? So this is, going to be my beach bag, like a pretty big beach bag. So I've just crocheted the bottom there. I'm using three skeins held together, which um, it's not really ideal for crochet. I realized to be working with multiple yarns because um, oftentimes I will only get like two of the strands or one of the strand and it's kind of a hassle. So, um, but also I'm not a very that experienced crocheter. So this is definitely something that I am going to take into consideration for future projects to um, not maybe have like multiple skeins. But this, I mean, I did this in one day. Arguably, <laughs> I stayed on the couch and watched a lot of TV and just uh, crochet because I felt like it was so addictive and I just tried to get this done by today. But then I got like really, um, I feel like I had to tense up quite a lot because it's pretty thick. At the time of editing this video, I've actually managed to complete this crochet bag. So on Monday, I completed this bag and went out and took some photos of it. So I thought, why not share the finished object with you? Also, I got so many requests to do a tutorial for this bag. So I'm definitely going to make that, possibly even a pattern and some other size options. So that is coming up. Real quick, I'm jumping in here to thank today's sponsor, which today happens to be myself. <laughs> For the entire month of June uh, 2022, you can now get all my digital courses for 50% off with the code June 2022. But this code is only valid for June of 2022. The Creative Photography with Kika class consists of three photo projects that you'll be able to complete step by step. In them, you'll learn how to use Photoshop, how to get over the awkwardness of taking a self-portrait, also using the self-timer function either on your camera or your smartphone, also making the most out of your smartphone or getting more comfortable working with a camera. Plus lots of tips and inspiration and ideas to get started and to develop your own style. My self-taught to self-employed master class actually includes the creative photography with Kika class. So when you sign up for the self-taught to self-employed master class, which you can now do for 50% off, you'll also get access to the photography class. Now the name says it already, but the self-taught to self-employed master class is really a step-by-step -step class where you'll learn how to develop an idea from your creative passion or interests and make it into something actually sustainable that can earn you an income. Now the tools we use are Instagram and YouTube because that's really the tools that I've used to grow a community and a platform and ultimately a place where I can market whatever I decide I want to do. The feedback that I've gotten from students from this class has just been overwhelmingly positive. They got so much just positive energy and momentum and just put more fun into 
building your own business and your own thing. So if this sounds interesting to you, use the code June2022 to get 50% off both these digital classes. Moving on. All right. So this one is something I cast on very recently. And here we again have yarn that is incredibly tangled up. So this is the start of a Lola top, which is a top that I did it's already a few weeks ago. Um, actually, I haven't shown you probably it here. I've only shown it on Instagram stories. So this is the Lola top. It's made in a two by one garter rib stitch. Um, and I love it. And I've already made the pattern. So it's now being uh, like uh, tech edited. Uh, and then I'm definitely going to be releasing this as soon as possible. Um, just need to get the pattern finished. And uh, I wanted to do like really different kind of color. But ooh, I already cast on one in another color and now this one. And I'm again feeling like, oh, should I go for a more like classical combo? I wanted to try with like having different color, like multiple colored stripes. But I'm not sure. I have to think about it still if I'm going to go ahead and finish this in this color. It's again all the multiple color strands are from Sunnes Garn Mandarin Petite. And then this one is a oh cotton, 100% cotton yarn that I picked up in Tallinn in a shop called Wool and Woolen. And I'm not really sure what this yarn is called. Um, it's like kind of just called like cotton yarn. So, uh, but I'll try to find the link so I can link it below for you. Um, but yeah, so that's one is really um, at the start. So the way this top is made is you first do the front yoke and then the back yoke, and then you put them on a circular needle and make the body. So you first do back and forth and then you do it on a circular needle from top to bottom. And then you pick up stitches here along the edges and also cast on for the shoulder straps. And I'm really happy with the construction of it. It was a bit of a risk because uh, I haven't done this kind of construction yet. So uh, just to calculate like how much it would stretch out uh, and like until I had actually done like the whole shoulder strap, it was really hard to envision how it would going to fit. So, but I'm very happy with how it turned out and definitely going to make at least a couple more of the Lola top. But that is that one. So I'm not really sure um, if I'm happy with the color or if I will go with like, I'm thinking like if I should just do like a super classical, like black and white, I think that would look so nice. Um, but then I'm thinking like, is that too boring? But then again, that is something that I wear a lot. So I don't know, I'm, I'm still kind of torn. So I'll, I'll have to see. <laughs> All right, moving on. Oh, this one I am super excited about. Um, and I think it's turning out so, so gorgeous. This is 100% cotton. It's a top down sweater. Let me show you that. Well, now I have it on this needle. So maybe it's a little hard to see, but here is the back yoke. So we have some cables and really wide rib and I'm using two cotton strands. One is Mandarin Petite again. And then the other one is from Novita, Novita Knits. Um, and they're a Finnish yarn brand. And I really like this shade of pink. So it's their soft cotton. Um, I think it's called rose water, maybe this color. Um, and I just felt like I really want something long sleeved that is in cotton. And then I had, I've never really done like this type of cable motif with this like wide rib in cotton. So I'm really excited about this um, and to see how it's going to turn out. This one is also one that if it turns out nice, maybe I'll make a pattern for it. Um, but first have to kind of figure it out myself and see how it's going to be. But I really, really adore just this marled color texture. And I, I mean, there was one little fear that I figured if it's, I have two diff different color yarns, so it comes this marled effect. Um, I was afraid of the cables then not being so visible. Um, and then, you know, spending a lot of time on something that is not so visible or this texture, but I feel like it's really visible. And that's probably because I chose still quite light colors. So, but yeah, very excited to see how this is going to, how this is going to turn out. Okay. Next one. Oh, this one is so, uh, silly because it's almost done. It's like really close to being finished, but I ran out of yarn. So another cotton top again, sun is gone, mandarin petite. Um, yeah, I might have a little bit of obsession with this yarn at the moment. I feel like with cotton yarn, some of them aren't that soft and some I feel are spun really tightly. So they can feel 
a little bit uh, coarse or a little like hard. So the Mandarin Petite one I really like because it is so soft and I feel like it's maybe it's that how it's spun that it's not so tightly spun. So I really like that. So this one first uh, my idea was to have this cable in the back and then that these two cables would sort of separate uh, or go like go like this <laughs> for uh, the back neckline I suppose but then I tried it and it didn't really look so nice so now I'm just doing like a simple neckline shape and now I'm also even thinking that then you could have this uh, be reversible because it's just stuck in that stitch on the other side so then you could choose which one which side you want to have on the back and which one on the front so almost done with this one and also as you'll see with my next project this color I don't know I had like a phase where I was just into blue and I wanted to make something blue so here is my super oversized comfy blue sweater that um, now I need to do the sleeves and then I need to do the collar. So this one is super, super large. It, I made like also slits here. Like this is really the sweater that I want to always wear when I just want to have something really oversized and be super comfy, um, kind of snuggly. And I'm using six millimeter needles for this, just stockinette stitch. I started from the bottom and then just went up. Um, and this one, I, this is kind of also my comfort project. I feel like this is the one that I every once in a while work on. I don't take any stress on it and it's really like easy and don't have to think about too much when I'm doing it. And also because a lot of sweaters, you know, have the one by one rib and then I wanted to have like a wider two by two rib here at the end. And then also the slits, cause I felt like I just wanted to try that and have that. And it's sometimes just nice to spice it up with these small details. So this one, can't wait to finish it. Um, and yeah, it's the Sunnes uh, Borstet Alpaca yarn, which <laughs> I have also used in the next one. We have this one, which is so, so close to being finished. It is the Sela sweater by Line Publishing. Um, and Line Publishing or Line Magazine, they're a Finnish, uh, knitting magazine but they're also international um, and they're like really really huge and um, they did this pattern for the Sela sweater and all the proceeds are going to this Nice and Punky which is like an organization that helps people in vulnerable countries or female entrepreneurs in vulnerable countries and help them you know get set up so that they can have their own businesses and that's just a really good way to help so uh, I think that's a really cool initiative and um, this one is also knitted in Borstet Alpaca and it's knitted from top down. It's like a raglan sweater. Um, you do some German shirt, shirt rows, <laughs> German short rows here at the beginning and then you just knit down. Oh, these are clinking so much here. Um, and it's nice because it's really a deep yoke as you can see. So it has like a really nice uh, oversized and just like relaxed fit. And this color, this kind of lavender color, oh, it's so nice. I have never knitted anything in this color, which is weird. No, I have knitted something in kind of a more deep purple color uh, long ago, but this one I really, really like. And I can't wait to wear this, probably more like towards the autumn. And also it's like classical, you know, I like finished the whole body, then the sleeve, and now I'm just like stuck on the second sleeve, sleeve island completely. <laughs> so I don't have a lot uh, left but maybe it's gonna be one of those that I bring on a road trip somewhere and I just sit and knit knit the other sleeve so it's almost done and I can't wait to wear this this gorgeous color all right um, I've been flying through this oh yeah we have a few more um, I feel like I'm speaking so fast but <laughs> maybe that's okay anyways this one um, I started quite a while back already this is from cotton but it's a really thick cotton yarn is it by Katya um, I think it's called I'm not sure what it's called like thick cotton or something like that um, and I really like the color like this very kind of pastely oh there's something there um, color uh, or pink blush color but I just started to knit it without any real plan so <laughs> I've knitted up to here I mean this is obviously going to be like the body for it but I'm not really sure if this is going to be a top or a sweater I mean I feel like it's quite thick for a top I'm wearing or I'm using six millimeter needles uh, what is that in US I think that's US 10 maybe if I'm not mistaken um, so it's really 
a, one of those projects that I'm just not sure what to do with. And I also only have like one skein after this left, so I don't have enough for like a long sleeve sweater, even though, I mean, of course I can order some more, but yeah, I just started it because I felt like starting something and I got this yarn um, and then wasn't sure what to do with it. So yeah, <laughs> work in progress for sure. One um, sweater that actually, it's not a work in progress. It's actually a completely finished sweater. <laughs> Um, and this was supposed to be in my book. So here we have this really heavy, um, completely finished uh, zipper sweater. It's knitted um, in brioche stitch uh, from top down in a yarn from uh, We Are Knitters, um, their merino wool, but what is it called? It's called something else. Um, I'll, I'll try to link it or put a photo here. Um, it's a super wash wool and I absolutely adore like these little confetti colors. Oh. And um, it was such a pleasure to knit with. I knitted with five millimeter needles, that's US eight. Um, I just enjoyed knitting with it so, so much. But unfortunately, I haven't really ever done like a zippered sweater like this before. So there are many, many things that I would have done differently. Like, first of all, I would not have done this construction. I would probably have done instead from bottom up um, or just like a regular one, because now I did uh, this kind of construction where I cast on the back and then I picked up stitches here. And um, the main issue I have with this is that I did these increases and decreases around the arms. And I feel like those created a lot of bulk around the shoulders, which I just don't feel like looked so flattering. And then the second issue I have is the zipper. Like this yarn I think is too bulky or the sweater is, or it just doesn't look good. Like it became very bumpy and I just wasn't 100% happy with it. So I then I just decided that, you know what? I'm not going to include it in the book. I have not worn it a single time, which kind of makes me sad because I was so excited about this and I worked on it for so, so long. But sometimes you just have those projects that um, everything seems to be going good until the finished product or the result. And then you just aren't completely happy with it. And of course, I'm not... You know, I don't feel like we have to be that perfectionistic. I think it's okay that there are some small mistakes, but this one just felt like too big of design flaws. Um, so now I feel like I know how I should do it. I would also choose definitely a different yarn. So I learned a lot, but it's one of those that unfortunately was more of a lesson to be learned than um, something that I got uh, a new favorite piece from. Okay, and then uh, the last one that I'm keeping in a project bag, is um, my garter stitch cardigan where I am using an insane amount of mohair. I'm using five, oh, five skeins of this really, really pink mohair yarn. They're all different. They're some are from uh, Parmin or Permin, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Um, this angel yarn, then some are Yartigarn, and then there's one Sunday's garn uh, silk mohair. Um, and I started this when I was in Portugal and I just really got this crazy urge for something pink. So this is going to be a garter stitch cardigan, but I mean, using five skeins of mohair, needless to say, it's a little bit of a challenge to knit because they just tangle up so, so much. So, um, yeah, this is one of those that I'm sure I'll have like another craze of pink <laughs> and then I can return to this. But for now, it's a little bit on hold and also maybe waiting for a little bit colder weather um, to, to continue that one. All right, yo, those were all my current works in progress. Uh, maybe I'll even <laughs> start some more. I have so much yarn that I've recently acquired, so I really feel like I just want to knit it and, you know, bust my stash a little bit and all these cotton yarns. Um, let me know. It would be so, so fun to hear what you're working on at the moment. Um, so let me know in a comment below um, what you're working on and if you also have multiple projects going on at the same time. Um, I think most of us have a few different projects at the same time. Um, I have heard that those uh, monogamous knitters exist out there that only work on one project at one time, but I could never do that. I'm just way too, um, I was going to say fickle, but way too, um, I guess like my mind changes too much and I just need that variation. But I think, you know, everybody 
everybody has their own, I guess, personality when it comes to these things and just how you feel like uh, is best for you. And I at least do not feel any guilt for having many projects at the same time. Obviously, it's nice to then also finish some stuff uh, at some point, but I always feel like that the time comes. If you'd like to see more of my stuff, you can come and say hi. I'm over at Kutubakika on Instagram. I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, I was going to say something about this sweater, but then I remembered <laughs> I already showed you in the beginning. All right. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you back here soon. Bye.